D-Lab welcomes you to Tubab Detox. Jerry here, D-Lab. In the shop I have a Marshall 50 watt combo amp. This thing's a monster. It's got a pair of 12 inch speakers in it. The uh, owner said that it sounds mushy, unresponsive. So we're going to put around my new boat anchor Tektronix scope, take a look at the output, and then we'll get around the bench and fix her up. All right, so you're looking at my Tektronix 515A oscillate and television. You can hear that cooling fan in there. Sounds like we're in a submarine, doesn't it? All right, so I have an audio generator going into the amp, and you're looking at it on the scope. Now right now, I'm going to turn his gain way back and we'll come up with a master. Doesn't look too bad. Now I'm going to bring up a little bit of his gain and then bring the master up. Now look at that sine wave. Give a little more gain. See how it's cutting the bottom half of the sine wave right off. The amp is not happy with drive. There's another thing that I noticed. I'm going to zoom in on this thing and show you that. All right, so I've zoomed in on the scope screen a little bit. Now, if you look here, you see these little uh, spikes, little noise spikes. Now, watch when I give it a signal. They're like everywhere. See them? all kinds of these nasty, hashy, trashy spikes all over the signal. So I guess we're going to pull the chassis out and do a little further diagnosis. So first step, of course I give it a good look over, make sure there's nothing obvious. But the first thing I want to take a look at are these preamp tubes. Just because of those funny noise spikes. The owner did just recently replace the output tubes, so I don't suspect them at this point. So let's take these tubes and put them on the old Amplitrex. Alright, first thing I noticed, you look at these preamp tubes, and all they have is this strange identification on them. ECC83 with no brand name on them whatsoever. The other thing I noticed, if you look in these tube sockets, I don't know if you can see it, but they are saturated with some type of maybe a tuner cleaner or something in there. Oops. And every one of these. You see it? So here's the first preamp tube under test. Now watch the plate current. It's sitting there at 1.3 mils, then it takes off right before it ends, okay? In the second section, we'll do the same thing. Watch. Here we go. Come on. There it goes. That's not normal. So you can see you got 2.7 milliamps of gas on that tube. 3 milliamps on the other section. So these preamp tubes are flaky. I'm going to change them out see where we can go from there. Alright, so I have the original tubes installed and behind them would be the replacements. We know these are gassy, okay? But what I noticed is, watch when I move this tube around on the scope. See it? There's that hashy trash. I don't know if that's the tube or the socket, so let's change out the tubes. Now we have three new Saab techs installed. The other ones are laying right there. Same deal. I'm going to play with this tube. Let's watch the scope. Problem's still there. Alright. So my conclusion is, is you remember all that goop that was in the sockets? These things have caused trouble in the past. And they're hoping that a little tuner cleaner would take care of the issue, but in reality, we're going to change out those three sockets. So as you can see, the original sockets are pop riveted in place, so I have to drill those out, and we're going to replace them with these nice Michael X sockets. 
I have really good luck with these sockets. They're about $2.50 a piece. If you have to do this, don't go cheap. So it looks like we're going to change out some 9-pin tube sockets. So the first thing you want to do is document what's there. Okay, easiest way, digital camera. Get in there, take a picture of each socket. Either that or make yourself a good sketch. But you definitely want to wire these things up correctly or you're really going to damage your amp. Okay, next thing, obviously get those tubes out of the amp because you don't want to do maintenance. With these little fragile guys hanging out there, I always put them in a little padded box to protect them. So we're going to be drilling out those pop rivets. So obviously, get underneath and take a look at those tube sockets and make sure you're not going to drill into wires, okay? So if you see any that are in the way of the pop rivets, move that wiring, and then you're free to drill. Here comes the fun part, drill or killer. So here's some words of advice. Number one, use a nice, sharp drill. Number two, do not use a drill that's bigger than an eighth inch, okay? Number three, always use a little bit of oil, put a dab on those pop rivets, okay? That'll help this thing drill, it'll be smooth, you'll get better control. The pop rivets have a little divot in them so it'll center your drill. Get her right on top of her, hold her steady. Drill away. Alright, so if you see here, I've drilled off the heads of those pop rivets, okay? I didn't drill all the way through them. I just drilled the heads off. Now you can just take a screwdriver and get under here you can pop these off, okay? just like that. See how they're popping off? Do that to loosen them. Then you can extract the bottom side of the pop rivet and keep everything intact here because we're going to take these wires off one at a time. All right, this one's loose. Here's the last one. Pop him off. Okay, no harm done. So now that they're loose, you'll see what's left of the pop rivet. You can take some wire snippers, get in there, clean them right off. They'll pop right off nice and clean with the chassis. Okay. And then you'll see that little piece of pop rivet left. Take yourself a center punch, put him in there, boing, he's gone. Just like that. So let's start at socket number one. You can see it's loose. And I'm simply going to unsolder these leads. Of course I have it all documented where things go. The strange thing is about Marshall is that they just take their wires and push them in. They don't hook them around. It seems to work okay but I'm not a big fan of it. So you can see the first new 12AX7 sockets in place. And I always use these neat little nuts that have built-in lock washers. Really simplifies the installation. Just pop them in there and take your nut driver. Boom, ready to wire it. So when I wire these sockets, I always start with a filament circuit. Just get them out of the way. Since you want them to lay down on the chassis flat and everything else around it. So there they are. Marshall's red and black filament wires, which is also kind of odd because most amps is green and twisted and they use red and black. Maybe they thought it was DC. I don't know. So here we are. First socket is installed and wired up. Now the thing I found odd is this cap here. Got some heat shrink going over to the next tube. It doesn't really look stock. I'm going to have to check that on the schematic. 
Plus you can see evidence here that there's been some little wire soldered in here, some resistors cut out. It's kind of odd. So I need to verify this and make sure it hasn't been modified. To gain access to these other two sockets, I've uh, disconnected the speaker jacks. I'm going to swing them guys out of the way. I've got a clear shot. So here's the old wore out sockets. And there's the new Mitelex ones installed. Here's a little gee whiz information about these tube sockets. As they age, like anything else, you start getting corrosion in these contacts, okay? And there's really no way to clean them properly. So a lot of guys think, well, I can blast some tuner cleaner or deox in here. It really doesn't work. The metal is breaking down. The other thing that happens is these little contacts will start spreading open and you'll get loose pin connections. And people think, well, I can just get in here and I can put something in here and, and push them back together. That doesn't work either. Once the metal has fatigued to that point, you can bend them all you want. The problem's going to reoccur. The best thing to do, change the socket, which is what we did on this marcher. So I've went through, I've double checked my wiring against the pictures that I took, and I also made some sketches to go by, and everything looks 100%. So we'll put the tubes in, see if that noise goes away. So the amp is fired up. It's got the new Michael X sockets installed and the new 12AX7s. So let's do the same test. Remember this tube here is a troublemaker. So over to the scope. I've got my 2235 hooked up because at 515 the fan was too noisy. I didn't want to torture you anymore. Anyway, if you look at the trace, nice and clean. A little spike right there kind of odd. I'm going to move that tube around, the one that was sensitive. You see there's no variance. Okay, look nice and clean. I'm going to bring up some gain. There's a sine wave. I'm going to bring my volts up per division up. So that's the master. Now remember when I brought up the preamp, it started really distorting. So let me bring down the master, bring up that preamp. Look at that baby. Clean as a whistle. So it looks like we found the culprit. Bad tube sockets, bad preamp tubes. All right, well, piece of cake, huh? You would think. Yes, sometimes I do get lucky. However, if you notice in this video and my previous videos, I always look for the obvious. And when it comes to old tube amps that have served you for 50 years, there's going to be things that are wore out. There's going to be bad connections. So that's what you look for first. And the other big piece of advice is get yourself a scope. It doesn't have to be a really good one, but it will allow you to see things that you can't hear. So it's a very good investment and you don't have to be a rocket scientist to operate them. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my channel for more tube and fun. See you.